Hey there, as you probably saw in the title, I recently reached a goal I've had for a while now, 50 days to be exact, which is 1 billion gold collection. This has taken me a while, and that's not even including editing. Anyways, my first notion of going for this goal was during the 1000 Nucleus runs in which people kept asking me what I was going to do after them, and I didn't really know. Until I remembered that, eventually, I wanted to get to 1 billion gold, and I figured there was no time like the present to do it. I realized that this was a monumental goal, so it just kind of sat there as maybe I will, maybe I won't, for like 500 runs until I was finally done. Then, since I had nothing else to do, I figured I'd just go for it. I also had pretty fond memories of the previous 200 million collection I had done for really no reason, so I was excited. Right when I started again though, that first stream, it was brought to my attention by one of my guild mates, PogChamp1, who also has a billion gold, that I was kind of behind in the latest gold mining strategies. The first and most simple of these is not mining the piles. Mining the piles can sometimes result in failed ether warps, not mining as many blocks at a time, or needing to search for more gold. So I stopped doing that pretty immediately. I then continued along with my journey until he told me about the second thing I was missing, Y64 mines of Devon's. So, what is a Y64 Mines of Devon? Well, this Y value is taken from when you're standing in the floor of the Mines of Devon, the very lowest block where the biome reaches. A Mines of Devon has four different levels at which it can generate, being Y64, 65, 66, and 67. So, what that means is that only 25% of your lobbies will actually be a Y64. So, now for what it actually means and what you can do with it. If you dig one block down, entering Y63, then this is where the bow buff works. Most of you probably know where this is going now. You use the bow buff to outclass the Scotha and stats, which also outweighs the fact that you have to dig hardstone in front of you. One thing about this though is that most often you'll have to flick downwards to very quickly mine the hardstone so it doesn't nerf your rates by a whole lot, and you'll need a decent mole level. So if you can't afford to get mole 71 at least, I'd say, or are too lazy or skill issued to mine the hardstone, don't do this. If you can though, it'll increase your rates by about 10%, so overall, two and a half percent, because it's one in four lobbies. That's pretty sad, but I don't care. It's fun and cool and meta, and there is nothing you can do to stop me. Since this isn't meta to do when you have to dig two blocks of hardstone, there are some sections of the Mines of Devon where you'll still want to use a Scotha or whatever you're using, so I'd recommend setting up these pet rules on screen so that you can swap between the two pets quickly. There's also a sort of fake Y64, that being Y65s. If you dig one block down from a Y65, then you will enter the magma fields, but the bow buff won't actually apply for some stupid reason. Basically, the magma fields biome starts at Y64, but bow and heat only apply at Y63. With this knowledge in hand, and being quite overwhelmed by it at first, I eventually mastered it and learned to really appreciate it whenever I found a Y64. I then continued on my merry way for a few hundred million collection until I met the antagonist of this story. Game updates. And this requires a bit of explanation as to why, but they seriously suck. Basically, when you're looking for gold lobbies, one of the things you look for the most is low day lobbies. If the lobby is anywhere from day 0 to 2, then that means the gold in the mines of Devon will likely not have been mined out, so all you have to do is find it and mine it yourself. What a game update does is it restarts every single Crystal Hollows lobby to day 0, which sounds good because you'll find lots of lobbies, and it is, but the thing is is that every lobby goes up by one day at the same time. So what this entails is that for the first, like, half hour, you'll be getting good lobbies to no end. And then once all the lobbies reach day 3 or 4, you won't find any until the lobbies go to day 9 and new ones are created, because that's when lobbies are closed to being warped into. That is a long time to wait. What makes it even worse is that once the new lobbies are created from day 9, the only differentiation in when they are created is the random period between day 9 and 10. So a new lobby could be made on day 9.1 and another on day 9.5. This tiny differentiation is what decides the randomness of the days in the Crystal Hollows, and what that means after all that waiting, the cycle basically repeats. It's not as bad, but you'll still have to wait a few hours for the lobbies to come back. This cycle then repeats until all of the lobbies are randomized again. So let's say I'm mining gold on a beautiful Saturday morning, and then I get game updated. What this means is that after half an hour, I cannot mine for three hours. Then after that, I can mine for like maybe one hour, and then I have to wait another two to three hours, then repeat. It basically destroys your rates for the whole day. So yeah, they're painful. My main demotivator was these game updates, because it sucks to feel so helpless that no matter how determined you are or how skillfully you're mining, 
you just can't get any rates at all. You could say it was just mine and the Dwarven Mines, but that's literally a third of the rates of actually having good lobbies, and I just generally hate it. Like, it's probably my least favorite mining method ever. So, the admins decided that around 700 million collection was the perfect time to release the garden. What came with the garden? Game updates. And a lot of them. I got so ridiculously demotivated from it, and then the cherry on top was that Diana got elected, so every Iron Man on the planet wanted to mine gold for their griffin and whatnot, and a bunch of nons were generally mining it because gold prices were up 20%. It sucked. There was a period between 800 and 810 million collection where I just absolutely hated gold mining because it was getting destroyed by game updates and whatnot constantly. Luckily, this period only lasted for about two days, and eventually I recovered. I still had to pile mine for pretty much every lobby after that, though. With that rather depressing story out of the way, I'd like to mention something else I changed about the way I mined, and something that could greatly help any potential gold miners here. It's the way I used mining speed boost. In my initial gold video, I made it seem as though swapping with any use slot binding was the only way, but it really isn't. Personally, I bought another Devon helmet so that I could bind my wardrobe to a key in my keyboard using sky tills, swap to Devon armor, use mining speed boost, swap back, and mine. If you don't really feel like spending 100 million coins for something that stupid, then what you can do is dig down to the magma fields, which will only be 2-3 to three blocks under you, swap to bow, and just use mining speed boost as you would regularly with a blue cheese swap. This also makes it so that if you're mining in a Y64, then you don't have to wardrobe swap at all, simply just use mining speed boost. Something that this brings on is possibly not needing a blue cheese omelette for some people. If you can't afford a blue cheese omelette to swap with, then what you can do is dig down to Y64, equip bow, and swap to full Devon, use mining speed boost, swap armors, and swap pets again. And if you have 8090 mining speed at base while in the magma fields, you can insta mine the gold without needing a blue cheese swap. This tech can be quite useful for those of you who may need like 10 million gold for a golden dragon, but don't really want to spend a whole lot of money on a setup to insta mine. Speaking of golden dragons, this method actually gives around 1.7 million mining experience per hour at max, so it's actually better to level a golden dragon if you want that bit of extra money from this. That stat was taken from my best hourly test, in which I got 5.3 million collection per hour, only 21.2 million coins per hour, it's not good for money, and the aforementioned 1.7 million mining experience per hour. I usually averaged around 4.5 to 5 million collection per hour off stream, but on stream it usually hovered at or below 4 million per hour because streaming is downtime, what can I say? Anyways, finally, after utilizing everything I've taught you here and mining for just under two months, I hit my goal. And here's that clip. One more block. If you think I'm hitting it exactly, you're crazy, okay? I don't care enough. I need to be done. Yes! Oh, I've been clicking yellow blocks for 250 hours. And that's over. I'm there. <laughs> I have mined. So much gold. <laughs>